This talk is an overview of anxiolytic medications. In this talk, I'll be focusing on as-needed, or PRN, medications for acute anxiety. However, recall that the medications generally used on a daily basis to treat anxiety disorders are the antidepressants. I'll teach you about the different anxiolytics by pointing out some of the key differences between them. I'll outline the anxiolytics in the order in which I usually prefer to try them, based on their side effect and efficacy profiles starting with hydroxyzine. Hydroxyzine is an antihistamine that also has some serotonergic and dopaminergic effects in the central nervous system, which are thought to produce anxiolytic effects. Hydroxyzine is a great first choice, as it is safe and well tolerated, though is less potent than other anxiolytics. Propranolol is a beta blocker that has an off-label indication for performance anxiety, and in general can be effective for somatic symptoms of anxiety, such as those associated with panic attacks. It may be less sedating than hydroxyzine, but beware of the potential for bradycardia and hypotension. The gabapentinoids, including gabapentin and pregabalin, have a mechanism of action similar to benzodiazepines in that they act via the neurotransmitter GABA. For this reason, they can be helpful for anxiety related to benzo withdrawal, and some evidence indicates benefit in cannabis withdrawal as well. Additional pros are that they treat pain and have wide dosing intervals, so can be titrated very specifically. However, they are renally cleared, so consider avoiding or lowering the dose in patients with renal disease. Quetiapine can be effective for anxiety, particularly anxiety associated with psychosis symptoms, but beware its sedating and metabolic side effects. Finally, let's discuss the benzodiazepines, which should be only used as last-line options for acute anxiety. Benzos can be very potent anxiolytics, but unfortunately come with risks of dependence, misuse, and potentially fatal overdose and withdrawal. Therefore, when starting a controlled substance such as a benzo, it is important to establish rules for how they will be prescribed, or even have your patient sign a contract. With that said, let's outline some of the different benzos, which I'll organize according to their duration of action. First is the short-acting benzo lorazepam, also known as Ativan. It has a time-to-peak effect of around 2 hours, and a half-life of around 12 hours, though this can vary based on a patient's metabolism. The last column here will list the Ativan equivalent for each benzo, that is, the dose of the other benzo equivalent to one milligram of Ativan, which can be helpful in switching between different benzos if needed. Clonazepam is a middle-acting benzo, with a time to peak similar to lorazepam, but a longer half-life. Diazepam is long-acting, with a longer time to peak and half-life. Finally, Alprazolam has the most rapid onset of those listed here. Due to this rapid and potent anxiolysis, it can be very addictive. It also is associated with rebound anxiety, that is, anxiety that recurs after the drug is cleared, and difficult withdrawal symptoms that can make it very difficult to discontinue once started. As such, I tend to avoid using alprazolam in almost all cases. In general, if I do feel that a benzo is indicated, I will start with the longer acting options, only resorting to shorter acting options if anxiety symptoms are significantly impairing despite trying other anxiolytic options. That's the end of this talk. Remember, anxiolytics do not treat anxiety disorders. They should generally be treated with antidepressants and therapy. As such, anxiolytics should be thought of only as a temporary solution to help a patient reduce distress and live a more functional life in the short term, while finding the right combination of antidepressants and therapy to bring anxiety symptoms into remission. Thank you.